I've acquired this Bridgeport mill and I want to get it running, but it's got a three phase motor on it. I don't have three phase power here. The guy I got it from said it was 240 volt, three phase. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an inverter on it. I looked at other stuff like a static phase converter. I heard not so good things about those. Those were very affordable. And then rotary phase converters, but that seems like that's more for multiple pieces of equipment. And I just have one piece of equipment here. Apparently this is a two horsepower motor. And because of that, it's gonna draw enough amps where I had to get a inverter that's gonna be 240 volt single phase, both the hot legs. I'm not an electrician. Take anything I say with a grain of salt. This may not be the way to properly do it, but this is how I'm gonna do it. I do have some experience, however, though, because I've done this once before. I did it to this drill press, and this is the uh, L510-101 uh, single phase. So what I initially did with this is I had this inverter powering the motor, and then I had like a switch after the inverter. Well, that's a no-no. The inverter turns on and shuts off the motor. So this on and off here is just to power up the inverter. See if this thing runs. <laughs> breaks that spindle. I got it just coasting to a stop. Printed the manual. It came with one too. I don't know if it's the same. This is the quick start guide. So they got this uh, diagram here of what all is supposed to be in there. So I'm gonna have a circuit breaker. Not gonna have a magnetic contactor since I don't need it. Asking for a fast acting fuse. So I got some of those. I did get a noise filter for the line side and then the inverter. This here is the L10 model 202. So 240 volt single phase. It's uh, getting fed from both of the hot legs on that service. The first thing I need to do here is determine how this motor is hooked up. We have a low voltage setting on the right there, then high voltage setting on the left. Open this up and see if I can see what's going on in there. Each one of the incoming wires is hooked up to two leads. And then you got three leads hooked up together. So that matches this diagram here. Low volts. Depending on how many volts I put to it, I believe these are going to be the running amps. I'm going to stick some test leads in there and let's see what uh, voltage we've got here. So one leg is 119. Other legs like 119. Oh. Change the settings here. Lug to legs like 240. So it looks like a ground wire and then three hot legs. But they had all these hot legs going through a fuse. So I'm not 100% sure what type of service that uh, this was hooked up to. It's definitely a different utility uh, area where this came from. I plan on using as much of the stuff on the machine as I can. So I'm gonna use this box. And I'm actually going to vent it and have the inverter right inside here. I think they had some other sort of step down transformer in the back here for uh, like a 115 volt outlets. I can't read the nameplate on it. I think I'm just going to get rid of this deal here. Here's what we're going to power it off of single phase three wire. So off each side of the coil in the tub, you get 120, and across you get 240. So I'm thinking it was probably powered off a three phase four wire delta. So from one leg to another 240, one leg to another 240, and then across the uh, the first two legs 240. Probably this. So I like to play around with stuff. I made a temporary cord to this so I can set the parameters. And then I'm gonna temporarily hook it up just to uh, run the machine. Power this on and off with the uh, breaker. That's what I'm gonna do for the final product. Is when I'm using the mill, I'm just gonna turn the breaker on to power up the inverter. This 202 is calling for an input current of 15.5 amps. So I think I'm gonna fuse this at 20 and have a 20 amp breaker for it. Control method, I'm gonna pick this SLV mode. So that's uh, code 000. Let's see Zero. 
get that set to one. I could change it either way. So I'm leaving it. I changed code five to the potentiometer on the keypad. Now that works. It's just gonna be left at 60 though. I don't have a frequency drive friendly motor, so I'm gonna be varying the speed with the actual mill itself. Here's its stopping method, close to stop. So 0709. Set to zero. I want it to close to stop, so we're gonna go to one. Oops, this button. There you go. So, is it one now? Yep. I think there's a couple other ones I gotta set here. Here, mode selection. Everyone's setting it to three phase. I guess this is the thing to do. So it looks like uh, we're gonna set that to zero. So it's 11.02 to zero. When I was programming the first VFD, the tech on the phone said you want this set up to 16. So I don't know if it's a VFD or the motor is quieter. We crank that up to 16. It's 11.01. You can see this thing's uh, relatively easy to adjust. Because that's forward. So we're not going to use the switch to start and stop the motor, we're going to use the VFD. I think I'm going to um, use control wire and use the switch remotely with the VFD instead of running current through it. So I've completely bypassed this box. Alright, is it clear? Looks like it. noise in his head with this spindle. But working on this uh, mill is going to be another story. Looks like we got a bit of a situation here. I don't know that that uh, door is going to shut like this. Folks, it's a shame this latching mechanism sticks out enough on the door that it ain't going to work like that. My VFD didn't fit in the Allen Bradley box, so I went ahead and got this project box here. It's a little bit deeper. Decided instead of mounting it right here, I'm gonna mount it on the back where that uh, transformer was. That way if I have an awkward piece and the knee is low, this box uh, might not interfere. Like the piece is hanging over. The smell kind of looks like Swiss cheese. There's holes everywhere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just gonna try to reuse some holes that were already there. But before I do that, I'm gonna wipe the machine down. It's pretty bad. I'd like to paint it, but I don't have the time for that right now. So we're just gonna work on mechanicals. So there's the box mounted on there with existing holes. So that box came with like an interior plate that bolts in there. To make it easy on myself, I'm just gonna screw a piece of plywood to this. So I may add some components. I may add a relay and a 120 volt outlet on this. So I think I might try to get one breaker to control everything, but I'll come at a later date. This VFD is supposed to have adequate ventilation. It has a fan in it there. And this box is supposed to be sealed. I'm sure if you left this on the rain, it would fill up with water. Unlike that Allen Bradley box that you could probably submerge and it would hold air. I'm gonna um, somehow get this on here to cycle air through this whole deal. This filtered grate set too, try to incorporate this into this somehow. Watched a couple other people's videos and just trying to come up with the best possible thing. I just traced this grate. Suck from the outside into the bottom to pressurize this and then exhaust up here. Looks a little rough underneath there, but it's all deburred. It should be fine to cover on it. I think I'm going to put a four box right here. I changed my mind. I better be able to get into this thing in case I get a problem. I can't be sliding around a 2,000 pound milling device. So I put it low and then I kind of put it towards the back a little bit. Hopefully it'll work out like that. All right, I got my outlet box mounted and I've been working on this for what seems like hours. Shavings everywhere, drilling holes everywhere. I don't even know if this is the right box, but I'm gonna have six outlets on here. If there are any electricians out there watching this, uh, why don't you tell me how many NEC rules I'm violating here? Anyhow, I'm gonna have my 240 coming in here, my 120 coming in here. This will be for my e-stop. 
This will be to the motor and this will be to the control. Get this vent deal screwed on, Let's see how this works. Actually snapped on there pretty good. Fast acting fuse. So I went on online and got these little fuses, 20 ampers. It's supposed to be uh, fast acting. I picked a 20 because of this chart here, input current, saying 15.5. I just realized, to get a chart in the back of the book, they're recommending like a 30. So, I don't know. I'm gonna try what I got. We'll see what happens. Lower the fuse, the better if it works. A fuse block, and then I got input noise filter. Went online and got one of these as well. So, so you're supposed to have one after the VFD, but it's not getting one. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this stuff in and then uh, wire it up. So we have our 240 volt three wire circuit here that has a grounded wire going to the VFD. Then we ran a separate circuit. This is the 120 volt two wire circuit going to this outlet scheme, all the inside for the fan. And then my outside box for all the accessories on the mill. So everything's grounded too. I got this VFD ground tied into the case. This box is grounded and this box is grounded and the whole thing's bolted to the mill so the whole mill's grounded. Let's see here. And I got the whole orange. I should point out that not everything is as it seems in here. For instance, this white wire is not a neutral, it's a 120 volt hot leg. And another instance is these are the three phase wires going to the motor. Like this green is not a ground and this red is not a neutral. Really only a licensed electrician should work on this. Do not attempt this at home. I'm going to try to use this original forward reverse switch as the on off switch. And I think I just need some bell wire instead of this huge cable they had going in there. I had this shielded bell wire laying around, looks like it's four conductor. For the control circuit wiring it says here you're supposed to use shielded cable. Here's the cord grip I'm going to use. I think I'm really going to have to crank down on this to get it to bite on that bell wire. There it is hooked up. My crimper crushed two of the three cheap red insulators on these ring terminals. I couldn't get it to go on, I was just wrapping the wire around. All right, so I got my white to common, my red to S1 for forward, my black to S2 for reverse. I got that from this diagram here. To make it work, I turned the mean run source selection to 0002, changed this to one for external run to stop. I believe I also changed the alternative run source selection to um, external run stop 0003. All right, so 002 is set to alternative. So then I just set uh, 4 to 0, 0300 0, 0 to 0, and then 0301 to 1. There's a tape. I'm going to switch forward here. And then here's my reverse. I just set S1 and S2 for the uh, forward and reverse, so I could use any of these other ones for my rapid stop. I think I'll use the next switch in line here, S3. We'll set that to setting 14, page 436. We'll give it a shot. I got this big old E stop switch here, so it's be easy to hit with my leg. I got a box like this, and that's going on there, and then that'll be on there. I've grounded the shielded cable on this box. You have a raised pad for uh, grounding. You just have to have a package of these green screws. Looks like we have a normally closed switch here. So in setting 309, I set switch three to one, normally closed. So it's the, uh, the middle digit there. Let's take a look. There it is, middle digit one, normally closed. Here's my wiring for the e-stop. I used white again for common, and I used a green going to switch three there. 0302 is for switch three, so that's been set to 14, rapid stop. It's coasting down. E-stop. So I've changed 0017 Decel time 2 to 0.1 seconds. I got my drill press set at 0.1 and it stops in the dime. This machine is not liking that though. So it stopped faster. 
but I'm getting an over voltage error. Decel time set too short or excessive load inertia. So there's more rotating mass in this. Maybe that's why it's different than a drill press. I don't know. I'm going to play with it and see how quickly I can get it to decel without this error. I fan to always run while I'm hammering on it with this E stop. The fastest decel time I could muster was uh, 1.5 seconds. Yep, just regular restop. You don't have to go in the box to reset it. Ready to run again. One is uh, run while the motor's running. I cranked up my acceleration time to 0.1 second. No issues there. Boost that uh, these two terminals here are for the relay. I think there's only one relay in this device. It shows it here. Here's the contact. It's set to normally open right now, setting zero. If I set this setting to setting one, when I power up that inverter, that relay kicks on. This will be a different job, but I could add a relay then to carry the current for this 120 volt two wire circuit. Whenever this VFD is powered on, it would power on all that stuff. I got everything plugged in here. The fan sure is loud. Muffles it a little bit. If I did it again, I'd look for like a super quiet fan. It doesn't have to move as much air as it is. It's really coming out of here. The three accessories I have right now are hooked up. But say is to add a power Z feed, which it's definitely going to get. <clears throat> then a Y, I'd only have one outlet left. Let's take a look at this thing. Luckily this DRO works. Seems like a pretty nice one. Dun. I didn't do a little work to this, but I got it working. This power drawbar deal works too, so pretty happy with this mill. I'm glad I was able to keep the original Bridgeport power feed. I wouldn't have wanted one here because it sticks way out. This one, uh, probably like an aftermarket servo type. This one's definitely getting uh, a power feed. It's bullshit cranking that knee up and down. I'm gonna work on this noisy head next, I think. It sounds like it's coming from the top here. So hopefully it won't be a bad fix. If anyone is interested in seeing more videos on uh, working on this mill, getting it better, drop a comment. As always, thanks uh, for watching everybody. I know this is kind of a long one.